Good day and welcome to the BMC webinar, Extracting Real-Time IMS Data for Analytics Safely and Efficiently. Today's webinar is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Skipper. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Lynette. Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world and when you're viewing this uh, webcast. Uh, this is Dave Skipper. I am the Product Manager for the IMS Tools at BMC Software. Uh, I'm going to be sharing the presentation duties with uh, John O'Dowd. John manages the uh, systems admin development team and in particular manages the development of the product we're going to be talking about a little bit later in the presentation here. Uh, first one minor housekeeping thing, if you have questions as we are going through the slides, there's a Q&A panel uh, should be open on your right hand side. Please type in the questions there. Uh, if we happen to see it and can quickly answer it as we're working on the slide, we'll try to do that. Otherwise, we should have time for uh, answering as many questions as possible at, at the end of all of this presentation. So today we're going to talk about real-time IMS analytics, um, what you'd build if you, you had access to them, and how you might use them in your organization to figure out what's going on and to uh, make uh, some more money as you're going forward here. Um, at the recent SHARE conference, the one in St. Louis, the most recent one, where uh, we celebrated the uh, 50th birthday of IMS, IBM had a nice session there as we were doing the birthday party and uh, let everybody know that uh, per their calculations, there are about 245 billion IMS transactions processed per day worldwide. So that is a lot of transaction data coming in, a lot of database accesses, since probably every one of those accesses either some IMS data, some DB2 data, some data someplace. Uh, so that is a lot of information that is coming past in the IMS world that you probably want to use that information to protect things, to prevent other things from happening, and potentially to promote things in your environment. And so today we're going to look at some of those uh, items that you're doing, the protect, prevent, promote, on the next uh, few slides here. Talk about some ideas that you might have, something you may not have think about, something we've been hearing from other customers in the whole protect, prevent, and promote area, and how then you would use real-time IMS analytics to do those activities. So first, kind of in the protect mode. Um, this really falls into the uh, area of uh, preventing unwanted accesses to mainframe data. A um, number of years ago, we sort of said, ah, we don't have to worry about mainframes much. They can't be hacked. Uh, the data's there. Uh, but indeed, it's been proven uh, over the last uh, few years that mainframes can indeed be hacked. Uh, there's been a successful one or two, not many, thankfully but one or two, um, but really some of the uh, uh, pro biggest problems on the mainframe is somebody that works within your own organization that has the appropriate um, security to get at data and then is reading data they're really not supposed to be reading, uh, even though they technically have access to do that. And uh, it will, when, you, when you find that, it's really very important, obviously, that you find that in real time it doesn't make much good to find out that somebody uh, read a lot of data they weren't supposed to read a, a day later or even an hour later. Um, by then, the damage has been done. If they read a bunch of credit card numbers they weren't supposed to read, they've probably been shipped out someplace um, if they've accessed other data. And in fact, uh, this week, I'm, a, I'm attending the um, Splunk conference in Orlando, Florida um, today, or the, 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 been there all this week. And as I've been walking around looking at the, the vendor booths and what they've been advertising, uh, by far and away the, the majority of the vendors are doing something in the SIM, the security information and, and, and management area to, uh, you know, that's how they're using Splunk. They're, they're getting data to Splunk. They're doing some sort of analysis of that data they're getting to Splunk um, if, for, for SIM applications. And in fact, we are sharing our booth at this uh, conference with Coralog, who has a SIM product on the mainframe where they have to get real-time data from um, SMF data, uh, DB2 data, we're working with them for IMS data, doing analysis either in their own SIM product or they can pass that data on to uh, other SIM providers, other major SIM providers, or to Splunk for customers that want to do their own sort of uh, protection security related activities with that data, combining it with data from um, the distributed environment in their organizations and, and finding out uh, if something is happening 
that uh, should not be in the in the area and the, and the whole uh, security information event management uh, related activities that they're doing. And um, certainly, it, it, you've got to find the breaches when they happen in real time because it's uh, if it's after the fact, then you're uh, in, in the mode of trying to to figure out why it happened, and you're in the mode of uh, what do we do to prevent it from happening again, and in the uh oh, we've got a problem here. How do we deal with our customers? How we de how we deal with uh, the fact that we have uh, had some data get out that doesn't isn't supposed to have gotten out. And the other one we're seeing is GDPR. Now we we've had a number of sessions on GDPR. I did a webcast on this the same series of our uh, first Wednesday of the month technical webcast series last fall about uh, GDPR and and some of the ways BMC products can help you with that. But now that we've added the uh, Amy Data Extractor product that John's going to talk about, we've added our partnership with Coralog, we've got even more to offer in the GDPR area um, for protecting data in the, in the whole security uh, thing. And one of the other examples I've been thinking, I've been talking to people about here on the GDPR uh, front to why, again, real-time data is important, is one of the provisions of GDPR is that if I'm an EU citizen, I can say, look, uh, you may have some data on me, but I want that and want you to forget about me, and the right to be forgotten. It says, uh, even though you may have data, you need to erase it, scrub it, make it go away. And, uh, you know, you probably, if, you, if you're subject to the GDPR, you probably figure out a, a process to do that. But we all know data does get copied for test purposes, for, for other purposes. And uh, you may want to have a real-time uh, scan of your IMS data as it's going by to make sure that if somebody has said or a list of people have said, uh, I want to be forgotten, that suddenly those names aren't appearing in your real-time data as you're about to send out some notification or something uh, which would cause you to be in a violation of your GDPR requirements. So protecting is, is very important as to have real-time data as you're going through doing that. Kind of the second piece of that we talked about is prevent. Prevent something bad from happening. And um, we want to want to stop it from happening before it happens, before it has an impact on us. Um, this could be things, the way you want to run your um, IT organization, IT operations with real-time data, uh, finding that a, uh, an outage or a slowdown is either happening right now or even as you're using some of the machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence things that I've been seeing in these Splunk sessions, um, knowing that it might happen given the analysis that you're doing. So you want to be uh, aware of that. Um, we've got some examples as we were developing the Amy Data Extractor product. We talked to a number of customers. Um, the one example we saw was uh, we heard from people that uh, uh, buy, buy stuff on Amazon. My wife is certainly a, a, a good user of Amazon. She uses it regularly. Um, I've used it a few times, and anybody that's used a, any sort of service like Amazon or others, when you get ready to check out, you're, you're, they tell you what it's going to cost to ship whatever you've got to you, and you know that before you authorize payment. Well, they didn't need to find that information in real time. You're right there. You need to know and the way they do that is they ping the various shipping companies, the post office, UPS, FedEx, whomever, um, to say, well, what is it going to cost to ship these things to this address so that I can give my customer um, the right thing so they know when to check out? If those people they ask for the shipping information don't respond within a few number of milliseconds or that request times out, Amazon or whomever moves on to the next the shipper that they've got a, a deal with. So um, if you don't respond, you've lost real money because you're not going to get that shipping request. Somebody else will get the money from shipping that, info, that, uh, that stuff to my wife. So you need to find out when they happen, if things have been. Um, wait, we've, we've had other examples of somebody that they, they have scanners of something, and the, the scanner is on a distributed network, and it goes bad. And as a result, they're sending in IMS transactions that are causing ABNs. Uh, causing the transaction to, to not function properly. They've come to us and well, when that happens, we need to know right away, of course, that it's happening. We don't want to know 15, 20 minutes later that we've been losing uh, transactions. Please automatically you know, find those and then route those things to a different message queue where they're gonna, we're going to hold them for a while until we figure out what's wrong, why they've been ab ending. We don't want to lose the data, but we also don't want to present 
prevent, sorry, the good stuff from going through getting processed, as we're, we're all seeing all that happen. Um, we're seeing more, meeting SLAs. Um, you, you need to, there's, there's an instant payments uh, situation happening in Europe, also Australia, where it's a new thing where you have to transfer, you can need to transfer money from one person to another very, very quickly. I think it's a five second service level agreement, SLA on that. It has to complete in that or you, you start get penalized as a financial organization and uh, you could, I guess you could even probably be told that you're not allowed to participate anymore in the instant payments. Um, so again, you need real-time data coming from IMS because chances are a lot of that financial information is going to touch IMS. Uh, are we drifting? Are we getting to the point where we might not meet our five-second uh, actions here, um, preventing something from happening? And uh, yesterday I was at a session at the Splunk Conference by a, a bank in Australia and they were using um, information from a number of sources to tell them how close they were getting to their four-hour rolling average for their MLC charges. And then they would take actions to prevent bumping that four-hour rolling average up uh, by something new happening. If they already set a level, they, wanted, they, they were hoping to you know, not make it go any higher, not have something go there. So they were uh, watching that with, with real-time information and taking actions to either defer things or something to, to try to make sure they didn't uh, exceed a, a, a four-hour rolling average level that was acceptable to them. And then finally, in this, this three Ps or uh, sort of discussion here, uh, we're talking about promoting, promoting something in your business, promoting your products, uh, adding something on, something to help your business uh, do better, get more money, uh, and so on. Again, as we were developing it, we were talking to various customers. We had one story here, again, uh, kind of a financial institution story, where they said, well, we have a, a person comes up to either a teller or an ATM machine. They put in their ATM card, they swipe their card, and they said, in milliseconds, we know all about this customer of ours. We, we know what their credit rating is. We know what their balances are and their various checking savings, whatever account is. We know if they have a mortgage with us. We, we know all of that and very, very quickly. What we want to do now is analyze that, get some more real-time information from IMS, and be able to offer them something in about, they, in their calculation, they, they said we've got seven seconds for it, to take it for the, that person to complete their deposit. So it's about a seven second time frame where we could look up and say, hey, uh, see that your mortgage is at 8%, we're now offering mortgages at 5% or some number. Uh, your credit card uh, percentage rate is X, Y, Z. We are doing a special or we could, we've got a better credit card. Would you be interested? Uh, something to, to promote and potentially get more business or, or you know, capture, capture a customer that they don't have before. And, and again, that isn't gonna, they've got seven seconds. <laughs> it isn't going to do any good to find out a minute later that you could have uh, promoted something with this customer. You need to have real-time data to be able to uh, promote that, suggest that, provide that information. And, and another area, customer service. Um, I know, you know, it'd be nice if, as I'm renting a hotel room, if I've, uh, you know, the came back says, yeah, hello, David, thank you for your new. By the way, we noticed, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, you, you put in a request for a, a missing stay for your previous visit uh, two months ago. This is, well, probably less than that, a month ago. This is where we are in analyzing it, and uh, we expect your credit to appear in three days or whatever the case may be. Um, certainly that sort of customer service type of thing would, uh, I know I would appreciate it. And uh, to be able to get that feedback, say, hey, yeah, yeah, you know about me, you care about me, you're, you're watching out for me. Uh, I appreciate that. So all of these things, again, I'm on the phone or I'm on their website doing that reservation. Um, this does me no good, you know, does no good for them to know a minute later um, about that, uh, they've missed a chance. I've done my room reservation, I've probably moved on. So they've got, you know, seconds or fractions of a second to find that out and uh, send that information to me. And we've all seen the ones where, you know, you buy a set of speakers and it comes up and says, oh, uh, how about cables for those speakers? Do you have those? Um, that's another way you could promote something, get uh, uh, essentially expand that transaction, uh, get additional revenue as you go through doing that. So as, we, as you think about that, so maybe there's some suggestions for you as to things to think about as uh, in the whole promote, protect, 
and prevent area, ask yourself, your organization, if you had that real-time information, what would it mean to you? And with that, we're going to go to a polling question here to get some feedback from you so you, you can participate in this whole discussion. So if you had access to real-time analytics from IMS, what would be most important? I've talked about three, protect, prevent, promote. But in your organization, what would be most important? And the poll should be open on the right-hand side of your screen there. We're going to leave it open for about a minute. Uh, so you got about a minute there to uh, select which one is most important. Please make sure you press the Submit button over on the uh, on kind of in the bottom right-hand corner there to actually let us know about your answer. And we've got about 30 seconds left here for the poll. And I will jab around until we do that, because uh, I would like to provide the real-time feedback as to what you, the folks that are on uh, the webcast, think uh, is the most important second and third. So we'll let that uh, time for a few more seconds here. And then I know Jerry will work his magic and show me the answers uh, as, as I'm talking away here. But again, think of ways in your organization you had access to that data. Uh, how could you, you know, how could you use that data to uh, prevent something bad from happening, uh, protect you from something bad happening, uh, you know, prevent it before it happens, or promote your products and services? Jerry, do we have poll results? And we do. So protect, 58% of you say protecting would be the most important one, um, followed by B, prevent, and C, promote. So uh, didn't mean to put them in that order, but that's indeed the order they're most important to you. Uh, so I guess I'm not surprised in a mainframe environment that protecting what's going on is indeed the, the most important thing that, that you've got going on. But certainly 33% preventing slowdowns is uh, very important as well. Thanks for the answers. Um, we'll capture that and uh, move along here. So as we looked at this, we talked to a lot of customers as we were uh, creating the Amy Data Extractor product. Um, they told us some things we had to have here, you know, really must-haves for this whole situation. One was you could not slow down our transaction processing times in IMS. Um, I've talked about the, the criteria we got from a couple of places was if you slow us down by a millisecond, that's a serious problem. So our design criteria was uh, whatever impact we had, uh, it had to be a fraction of a millisecond. And um, so far, our testing has showed that's, in, that's indeed the situation. Um, the overhead, maybe not totally undetectable, but really in the level of background noise. We all know overhead levels are going to vary a little bit depending on what's happening in our system. There's always kind of that noise level that's there where things bump up a little and then back down and up a little. So again, our criteria was we should be in that, that noise level area where essentially you, you just kind of ignore that little additional overhead and goes on. And then the third criteria is uh, because of the vast amount of data IMS is producing, 245 billion transactions a day. Um, certainly, you, could, you didn't want all that data. You certainly didn't want to send all that data to Splunk or to whatever uh, other uh, environment you were using to do your analytics. You needed to uh, select and filter that data down to a reasonable amount of data uh, to reduce your costs of something like Splunk that charges by the amount of data you ingest or whatever other things down there so you just weren't overwhelmed with the amount of data that you were using to, to get your answers. So those are kind of the three criteria. Don't slow my transaction processing down. Keep the overhead effectively undetectable. And give me just the information I need when I need it. And with that, John, I'm going to turn it over to you to go into some more details about Amy Data Extractor and how we accomplish all of those things. Thank you, Dave. I uh, appreciate the uh, background and information on our uh, Protect, protect, prevent, and promote. Uh, that is uh, something that we're trying to address. The Amy Data Extractor for IMS is is what we're here to talk about today. It's the first in the line of many BMC products to be coming out with uh, the uh, Amy 
solution in mind, and, and Amy is, is uh, st standing for automated mainframe intelligence. So it's sort of a uh, conglomeration of thoughts in terms of moving us forward into the future, and you're going to see a lot more about it. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the data extractor. This is a, uh, a brand new product. It, it was delivered uh, GA on August uh, 1st. Uh, I think actually July 30th was the official GA date. But so we've been out there about a month or a month and a half. No, I guess we're in October now, so it'd be two months. So uh, what we do is we do extract real-time IMS log information for use in in in, in some applications uh, or analytics engines, as Dave as Dave already suggested, and we've got uh, th this uh, product is brought to you by the the uh, the group that uh, had provided uh, BMC products such as uh, Message Advisor and Log Analyzer. So we've got a lot of expertise in these areas, and we are using some very uh, very skilled techniques to get your data and to make sure that the overhead is as minimal as possible. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and also about some of our filtering techniques. So let's talk about real time for a minute. Uh, this is uh, this is what this is the big deal here. We, we all know that if, if we have to wait for a log switch to occur, it, it, it's too long. It, 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 we have we've talked to some customers that a log switch can vary. We've got some that uh, have told us, oh, it you know it happens every uh, 10, 15 seconds. Uh, uh, but we've had some that say, uh, you know, it could be anything from a minute to five hours. It just depends on the time of day and the load that's going on. So log switching, waiting for a log switch to occur, really isn't helpful when you're trying to uh, solve problems or prevent. Uh, issues from happening, and uh, even in the promotion side of things, uh, it's, it's really not something that we would, uh, we would want. So we need real time. So we, we heard what uh, our customers have said, and so we've produced this real time solution. We give you access to IMS log type and fields within log types for information. We're also providing integration with our existing product suite. We have all kinds of product value in the IMS world that's available to you, and we want, to, want you to take advantage of that, and we want to provide the integration points to do that. We've started off with a few um, uh, products to do that, and uh, let's talk a little bit more about detail uh, about uh, how this is all going to work. So let's uh, a little word about intelligent filtering. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, what, what we do is we, we have a uh, a, a phased approach to our filtering. We, we, we want to allow you to filter down to as, as discrete a level as possible. In other words, if you've got a field that you're interested in that's provided, written out by IMS to the log records, uh, we want you to be able to filter on that field. So if, it's, if that's a transaction name, okay, fine, we'll allow you to filter on that transaction name if that transaction is ABC, then you're only interested in those ABCs. If if it's a if it's a PSB name, if it's if it's a user, if you've got a user that you want to keep an eye on, we want you to be able to filter down on that particular user. We we also want you to extract what you want, and so filtering while filtering is leaving out things or including things that you want to see. We also want you to create a list of things that are associated with that particular item. So let's say, for example, you're interested in what user uh, Joe Smith has done, and uh, and you're not only want, you want to filter on Joe Smith's name, but you want to provide what databases he's accessed? What 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 did he update? Uh, what what uh, what did he have? Has he had five RACF violations uh, trying to access data? Uh, yeah, this kind of information is 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 what we also include in our our uh, capture techniques. Uh, so not only are we filtering, but we're also in, including more fields. 
And uh, I'll talk a little bit about what if modeling a little bit later, but let, let's move on and, and talk about uh, some of the uh, the big picture here about uh, the, 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 the kind of the flow of the way the data extractor works. All right, so this picture is uh, intended to show the flow uh, of the uh, AMI data extractor for IMS. And, uh, and on the left side of your screen, you'll notice that we've got the IMS data side of things. So we want to you know, we, we, we wanted to provide uh, real-time IMS specific. We want to include as, as much IMS information as possible that we can get out of log records. That's what this, uh, this uh, product is all about, is getting data out of log records that is important to you. We want to do it with uh, minimal overhead, and, and uh, we certainly don't want to disrupt the control region in any way. The, the data extractor is, is able to gather th this information and then provide filtering. And we also want to allow you to integrate in other BMC products that have information that also might be of use about a particular situation. So if you're interested in what's happening in a particular application and that, and, and in fact, discrete down even further to a particular database within that application, we want you, you to be able to extract information about whether that database is, in, is uh, it, if there's a slowdown, for example, you want to be able to pull in information from our other products that might, uh, maybe our advisor has determined that uh, the, the, the database is in need of, of a reorg or, or, it's, or some sort of a, a defrag needs to take place to, to clean it up and make it uh, run better. Uh, or maybe there's a scheduled outage coming along and you need information about that. Uh, we want to be able to include all that information into a, a common uh, a gathering area to that allows you to make decisions that you need to make, gets you information, and, and whatever you need. So we're all in the business here about getting as much information to you as you need to make your business run better and to help you make more money. Um, again, we're also moving on to the right. Uh, we're, we're, we've got this real-time mainframe data, and we want to provide it to the analytics engine of your choice. And we, we've... Uh, we we are very interested in these analytics engines and the the capabilities. It, it's uh, it's uh, been very eye opening to us to uh, the the wide breadth of uh, possibilities and ways you can go. And uh, we're we're going to talk about a few of these, but. Uh, Dave's already mentioned Splunk several times, but there, uh, we, we we get a lot of feedback about what kind of. Uh, of uh, analytics solutions and engines and everything, so we're, we've reached our second poll of the of the uh, of the uh, webinar today, and uh, this one is uh, a question to you. Uh, so if you would uh, include uh, your answers to the, on the right of the screen there, uh, if you are aware of an analytics solution that's in use today by your organization, if you'll just click on on any and all, this is uh, this is not just a choose one, this is uh, choose any that you're aware of. And I'll, uh, while we're doing this, I'll, I'll tell you some examples. I've been talking to one customer who, who uh, they, uh, in their IT area, they, they're very centric with Splunk. They, they've been focusing on that, but uh, they actually had a discussion with their their uh, internal uh, marketing people and uh, other areas of the company, and they found out that they're they're actually using Hadoop, and and uh, that's the big thing that uh, in their part of thing. And the IT guys didn't really even know that. So there, there, this is, it can vary within a company. There can be a lot of different uh, possibilities, and uh, so if you don't know, that's fine. But uh, we just thought we'd take a feel and let everybody see what uh, what the results are here. Uh, so uh, can we pop up with the uh, results there? We'll have the results in about 10 seconds. Okay. The poll is just shutting down. It's a slow poll. <laughs> so so as, as we're uh, waiting here for the results, I, I will tell you that we are addressing the, the Splunk uh, 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 solution. <laughs> And as it as would have it, Splunk is the most popular. We have found that Splunk is the the most popular, uh, especially among IT and 
and uh, SIM uh, uh, security information event management type uh, uh, folks that are looking for that security area. And they seem to be uh, uh, migrating towards Splunk and Q Radar. Uh, we're also seeing that as well. So I'm, I, these results aren't surprising to me. Uh, I think it's. Um, it's it's quite interesting to just to see where everybody stands, but uh, no surprise there. So uh, let, let me go back to the data extractor uh, for a minute, and uh, I, I think uh, what what I, I want to get across to you here is is that uh, this development, uh, while I, I mentioned that it was brought to you by a, a team that developed the message advisor, at, uh, Delta Plus, uh, the log analyzer, all of these. These are very control region centric products, and we are fully aware that that uh, your control region is the most uh, sacred uh, thing in in your IMS. Uh, just everything about IMS it, that is sacred. The control region must stay active. That yeah, the logging process must must not be uh, uh, altered. It, 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 it everything it. There's years of technology and development along in this, and uh, the process runs like a like a just a you know it's it's very finely tuned, runs very well. So what we decided is that we must have a very small footprint. We should not pr d produce any impact. So our our rule is uh, we 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 will do no harm. We we do not want to cause an impact to your control region. So we built up a little technology that that uh, that addresses that, and and I, I'm going to show a, a picture here about how that works. But uh, most of our work, rather than being done in the IMS control region address space, uh, is done externally in in our, our server address space. We 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 handle we do a very basic minor filtering in the uh, control region and then everything else is handled uh, externally and all the packaging and processing and filtering and uh, extraction is done outside of, of the control region so that's uh, that's that's the general idea of the of the way the product works uh, in the control region itself we have an extremely streamlined process uh, very few lines of code it's very quick and uh and 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 uh, we're we're talking uh in the terms of uh uh 1 to 2 3 microseconds i mean it's extremely uh uh, uh streamlined uh we do know io in the control region of course and uh and uh we have extremely low cpu uh costs and uh, obviously outages are something that we will avoid you know that is we know the pain you suffer if you get an outage so we're definitely extremely careful with that and and uh, so our server technology it it runs outside of the uh, IMS control region in a separate address space connects to the that IMS we have a one to one relationship server to IMS um, we have some plans for the future to expand that, but uh, that's our technology at the moment. This uh, the server connects uh, to also uh, the other BMC products that run externally. Uh, we, we have uh, a lot of uh, plans in place to add more and more products at, as time goes on. So you'll you'll see us get information from our database utilities products, from our other uh, systems products, and uh, that's the general direction we're moving in. Our server processing, it, like I said, it will move data, it'll move records that we get from IMS or from our API from external products and, and it will apply filtering to them. It will allow you to choose whatever uh, fields you want to be extracted. So you can choose from, if you're only interested in one or two fields within a record, you can extract those one or two fields. If you're interested in 200 fields in a record, uh, we, we have some log records that have as many as 225, 250 fields defined. So it's a lot of choosing to do there if you so desire. And then we handled the sending of that data on to uh, the uh, Splunk engine. And uh, this is a good time to talk about the fact that the filtering and the extraction list, so there are some solutions out there that will send uh, IMS log records on to Splunk and other devices. And the 
they they don't do any filtering, or they do minor filtering, but they don't do any extraction list capability. So they send the entire record. And what we are trying to address with our solution is we're trying to limit the amount of data that gets passed on. So since uh, if you since 88% of you have uh, Splunk, then you probably know, or at least have an, an idea that Splunk charges by how much data they get ingested. They want you to send the world over. They want everything because the more you send, the more they charge you. Uh, our, our solution allows you to to ex trim down enormously how much data you're sending over. This is this is one of our directives from the get-go is to limit what we're sending over to allow you to to save money by not uh, sending it off to Splunk uh, and and uh, applying it back to your business. As I said, the server output uh, it is we we have a TCP/IP uh, capability to send it directly to a Splunk uh, engine, and uh, it, that can reside anywhere. And we we also have capabilities to have you, you write your own uh, uh, or add in to some of the other uh, uh, analytics type uh, processors. Uh, we're building in more capability every day on that. And uh, it's just a matter of getting it, getting, uh, finding out what it is that our customers want. We also have data, data set extraction capabilities that allow you to write this data directly to uh, a data set. Uh, so, so, for example, if you wanted to tie in uh, to, excuse me, to a, a mainframe type uh, uh, intelligent uh, processor, uh, with that capability is there. We, we write it out in a very simple JSON uh, type format, very easy to read, uh, very easy to produce reports. <clears throat> Excuse me. So getting back to our protect, prevent, and promote, the, uh, the, the this is we, we, the Amy data extractor for IMS is is all about providing protection for your business and the data that, that you have. It's your data. You, you want to protect it. You want to be able to keep an eye on it. You want to know who's messing with it. And, and that, that's – so we ad definitely address the protect side of things. The prevent side of things, we want you to prevent problems as they're hap before they happen, but also you want to find and, and prevent future problems as you're seeing something happen. So the, we, we, we certainly are, are working more in that area as well, and a lot of our future development is going to go into the prevent side of things here. And, uh, and as far as the promotion side, we, we've already had some customers who, who see you know, they 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 watch a presentation and, they, and the, these little light bulbs kind of turn on where they get ideas about how uh, if they had access in in a real time fashion to when a a a bank deposit is made, uh, let's say you're at an ATM machine and uh, and uh, someone enters a, a uh, maybe they're pulling out uh, fifty dollars spending cash or something. They've determined that they've got uh, somewhere between eight to ten seconds uh, to to do something to that customer on the screen, and by having access in real time when that transaction runs through IMS, they can actually determine whether they need to uh, uh, pop up a an ad display uh, that displays a a, a a location sensitive ad maybe that uh, there's a uh, a loan special going on in that city where that person's making that withdrawal uh, maybe, maybe they're they're, uh, they're they're they check their credit score and decide that they this this person is is ripe for a credit card from from our bank uh, there's all kinds of opportunities there and we're certainly uh, being involved with the the promotion side of things and uh, and so we are definitely thinking about all these areas and pursuing and the the Amy solution BMC wide as a whole is is all about that as well so let, let, this will bring us to our last poll uh, and uh, in this poll we're we're going to ask you uh, about the biggest challenges in in your IT organization 
And I say select all that apply, but I, honestly, I'd really like to see it, what your most biggest challenge. I think all of these things are challenges, and answer it any way you like. But uh, I, I'd, I'd like to see what, what's, what is a big, what is the big challenge for you. So, uh, if you would answer that, I, I think there's uh, certain challenges that are more. Uh, difficult to address than others. Uh, certainly, aging workforce is happening to all of us, and, and, we've, and everybody's got budget problems. That, that's, a, that's, a, you know, that's just industry standard. And, and of course, training, uh, a lot of you are going from DB2 to IMS. You, 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 maybe you were the DB2 DBA, and now you're asked to be the IMS DBA as well. So there's training issues there. And of course, the big one, the problems, timeouts, uh, those, those are huge issues. And so we're, we're kind of looking uh, at, for your direction to give us uh, uh, some, some feedback on this. So uh, Jerry, whenever uh, the, the poll uh, is, is ready, just to have it pop up there so we can, we can check the results. I sure will. It's just about ready. All right. And uh, while we're waiting for that, we're, we're going. I'm going to uh, the next uh, set of things here. I'm going to talk about uh, the direction. So, oh, I see the results are there. It, it looks like uh, uh, it's kind of across the board there, isn't it? Uh, it everybody's concerned about aging workforce. Uh, IT budget, of course, is is a big deal, uh, and and the uh, the problem timeout area. So uh, it, that's that's that's. Uh, that is definitely uh, problems uh, that is, are shared across the industry. All right, let me pop on to the next page here. So uh, I, want, I want to sort of wind down and finish up by talking about our direction. Um, we're, we are focused on adding intelligence so you can have access to your information. That is what's important to you. We are trying to stay within our area of, of IMS providing. However, across BMC, and you'll see this in, in the coming weeks and months here, uh, BMC is not just focused on IMS. We're focused on lots of different areas. And we, uh, we, we want to address how we can help and, and uh, give you more access to your information to allow you to do with it what you need to. And, and that, is, that is the bottom line. We're trying to solve your business problems. We're trying to provide you information that you need. And that's what we're all about. Within the uh, Amy Data Extractor product, uh, we, we, we were trying to adjust ourselves a little bit to be a little bit as, as responsive as possible to your input. If, if we've got a an agile style development going on the product was released uh, in July and our next update is coming at the end of this month so that's a that's a two month turnaround uh and we've got and it's not just a little update with you know uh, uh, we got a fix to a problem in it we we've got some significant significant add in capabilities we and we we planned another update for the end of December so some of the things you'll see in the in the October update, uh, we, we put in this batch field explorer utility. This, this will allow you to run against a, a SLIDS uh, and apply your extraction and filtering so you can go look at something that's already happened and see what the output is that you're going to get in your real-time uh, capabilities. This way you can, you can, you can uh, play around with the filtering and, and extraction and, and come up with, the, with a solution that you, that you want. We, we also have uh, uh, listened to customers and some of these others are feedback from what we've heard. Uh, the, the type 01s and 03s, uh, those very common log records, uh, their, their data segment area at the end of those records uh, that is important to applications, we're, we're extracting that uh, and, and putting it in a raw format. We, we have longer term plans for that as well. We're, we're, uh, we've included uh, some, we've already got our main view uh, for IMS Fox Able records and Fox 9 records, but we're also including our Fox Able trailer records, which will allow you to see who read a database. So if, if someone actually went out and browsed a database and they weren't supposed to look at that database, we'll have that, that read documented in, in a, in a uh, 
extraction uh, uh, member, and you'll be able to say you'll be able to run reports against that. Say um, this guy went out and looked at that uh, social security database, and uh, does, I don't think he's supposed to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, we've added some local time on output that, to make for ease of use. Again, some of these are various customer type things. Uh, we. All, all I'm trying to get across here is that we're we're going to be constantly updating and adding. This is not a a wait nine months or for version 2.1.4. You know, this is going to be constantly being updated. Uh, you will see regular updates with us. In our December update, uh, w you'll see our integration with the CoreLog uh, database defender product. We we are. We are going to be the uh, IMS solution provider for CoreLog and, and uh, the, the, uh, from the IMS perspective, and we, we are integrating with them. We have an extremely good relationship with, with these guys, and they've got years of experience in this industry, and, and they've, got, they've got some capabilities that we don't have that we're going to take advantage of. And uh, we've got the speed and, and, uh, and the IMS uh, um, uh, expertise that they don't have, so it, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, link up there. Uh, again, we're going to expand our data segment extraction. We're going to make that even better, and and uh, we're, we will we continue to add log record extraction fields. We we've got a what I would call a subset of extraction fields right now, and we will be expanding that as time goes on and we get input from customers. But you can rest assured that we, our plan is to uh, allow you to access any piece of IMS log information that you are interested in, and 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 we will do that. We we have a very uh, uh, extensive technology and capability to, to do those very things, and, and we're working towards that. Also, you're going to see a lot more BMC product portfolio integration. You, you will see us uh, 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 announcing more of our products being linked in. And finally, the uh, there are two uh, other initiatives coming along the, down the road. Uh, we've got a root cause analysis and a, a predictive analysis areas that we are, are going to be focusing on in the, in the next uh, year or so. And that brings us to questions. Hey, John, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, just to kind of echo what John said, uh, we've been getting, a, uh, as customers have been working with AB Data Extractor, I know we've, we've recently got a set of four or five, six more log records that somebody wants for an application they have, and so we're, we're working on adding those. Um, so those are the our, our email addresses if you need to get a hold of either John or I directly. Um, but as we go through this, John, I'll let you move it forward a slide or two, and we'll actually use the next couple of slides to address one of the uh, the first question that came up in the uh, the the, the Q and A window. There, as you start building, please for those of you on the call, if you've got some additional questions, post them out there. Uh, and John, if you could move me forward to maybe slide 26, please. So the question was, would this be recorded? And uh, well, yeah, let's stop here. Well, first of all, in this series, uh, we do these every Wednesday. I think I mentioned that toward the beginning. The next, the first Wednesday in November is the seventh. Uh, we think we have a topic yet, but we haven't uh, finalized the speaker. So uh, stay tuned. There'll be an announcement. Um, we will have one of these in uh, in November, and a uh, topic to be announced. But uh, hopefully, the one we've got in mind, which is a pretty exciting topic. Uh, so, where can you find these recorded, the, the recording of this webinar as well as past webinars that we've been doing for, for over a year? A couple of places, communities.bmc.com. You go out there, you find the IMS section, it's under mainframe, there's IMS. Uh, go there, there's a listing of where you can both sign up for future webinars, and then there's a, a document that lists uh, and has the links to the past webinar recordings. Uh, give us a day or two to get them posted out there. Uh, usually it happens the same day, but sometimes it's a couple of days for that link to get built uh, out there. And in fact, since I maintain that page and I'm traveling this week, it, it might be a couple of days before I get a chance to do that. The other place is, John, I'll let you move forward one more slide. And again, take a day or two to get these posted. But if you go to the website, watch.bmc.com, as it shows at the top there, you'll find a, a number of BMC webcasts posted there. Uh, go in the upper hand, uh, right hand corner there, view all, 
You can pick the mainframe area to see all of them that are in the mainframe area. You can put a selection criteria in that says IMS, and since we include the word IMS in the title of the IMS ones, you'll see them there um, listed as the IMS webinar series. And this one will be there with the recording in, in a day or two, a couple of days, uh, at, at both watch.bmc.com and on the community's website. Okay, so with that, Dave, can I take, um, you uh, can jump right in, a, John. Yeah, there's a there's a there is a, a question or two out here. That, uh, so I'm being asked, uh, real time is how real time down to the millisecond, seconds, minute. Uh, we're, we're talking uh, uh, milliseconds for sure, uh, microseconds in some case. Uh, a, a lot of the when when we say real time, there there is a processing time of of getting that data to Splunk. And let's let's use Splunk as an example. So. Uh, there, there's, there's a bit of a processing time, so we're, we're talking uh, in, in a matter of seconds here uh, in, in, in actually getting it down to the Splunk. But it is, uh, it is very, very quick, and, it, it, and, and uh, we can get some demos that w would show you know, things popping up. Uh, it, it, it almost seems instantaneously, but obviously it's not. We, we are not using the, uh, the, the uh, the IMS log exit, we, we, we actually have a proprietary uh, a way of, of extracting the data, so, so it's, it's very fast from the IMS extraction uh, point of view. There, there's a little bit of processing time in, in the uh, ec uh, extracting on our uh, uh, um, server to, uh, to translate. We have to do a little bit of data translation to get it into a readable format for Splunk, so that th those are all very Quick things, and uh, it doesn't take very long. So it, it's 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 pretty pretty real time. Uh, and that's that's uh, how I would answer that. Uh, another question uh, that uh, asked: uh, would, would your root cause analysis uh, uh, address other areas besides IMS, perhaps CICS or DB2? Yeah, that, that, that part of the uh, the BMC uh, objective here is is to work with the the, the DB2 and main view and and CICS groups here at BMC to come up with a global solution the, the Amy umbrella if you will will will, will go across these areas and and, uh, and you'll you'll see more and more products uh, IMS the IMS team at BMC is very proud of the fact that we, we were the first to deliver a, the an Amy product but there will be plenty more coming along and the the uh, you, you will see us working together with these other groups to provide uh, solutions uh, across multiple areas, and uh, and uh, then uh, another question I, I saw: uh, Would your solution be applicable to uh, application groups? Uh, and and I think I I got to that when I was talking about the fact that. Uh, uh, a lot of application groups might be interested in monitoring their particular application for whatever reason uh, that that, uh, that through the 0103 log records and the and the uh, and the data fields that that are, are involved with those uh, you you can actually see in, in information about a particular applications and you can build these extraction uh, groups to to focus on a particular application. So very 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 much so. So if you need to get an application and group involved in in seeing uh, how how the product works, um, we, we're very much interested in that as well. And I think that's all the questions that I'm aware of. Uh, David, you haven't seen any other ones, have you? Uh, no, John. That's all I've seen. So uh, and we're. Uh, approaching the top of the hour here, so I think we'll wrap it up. Um, any other questions, John, maybe jump back to our email address uh, slide there. Um, yes, any suggestions for future webinars? You see John's got it up here, IMS webinars, at IMS underscore webinars at bmc.com. Um, let me pop up to 24. Yeah, there we are. Any questions you think of after the fact here, um, there's our email addresses, and it's either John or myself and uh, we'll get you an answer. Uh, so appreciate all the time of listening to us today. John, thank you for all the information. And uh, as mentioned, watch.bmc.com or communities.bmc.com. You'll see the posting there uh, in a day or two of the recording. And you can go there for any of the past webinars as well, uh, which are already posted out there. So with that, thanks again, and we'll uh, wrap up this month's webinar. 
That does conclude today's webinar. We thank you all for your participation.